lecture, we are going to be looking at joint and byproduct costing. And joint and byproducts arise with the same production process using a common raw material input produces two or more different products. So let's say, for example, one animal carcass is input into production. So that is the common raw material input. If one animal carcass is processed, that will result in leather, meat, and bones being produced. So one common raw material input produces two or more different products. Let's draw this up. So the common raw material input is the animal carcass, which is processed to produce leather, meat, and bones. Now it's important to note that these three products are not separately identifiable until a specific point in the production process is reached. And that point is known as the split-off point. So let's just add the split-off point to our diagram. So before this point, we will not be able to identify the three separate products. We can't see what's leather, what's meat, and what's bones. These products only become separately identifiable at the split-off point. So before the split-off point, we have the joint production process. And the cost of the animal carcass represents a joint cost. Now it's not possible to trace this joint cost to specific products. We don't know what portion of the cost relates to leather, meat, or bones. So this joint cost cannot be traced to specific products. However, we can't just ignore this joint cost because we need to value inventory and perform profit calculations. So because the cost can't be traced to specific products, we will need to allocate the cost to our joint products. And we are going to look at four different methods that can be used to allocate joint costs to joint products. So products are not separately identifiable until a specific point in the production process is reached, which is known as the split-off point. Before the split-off point, joint costs are incurred on the production of all products emerging from the joint production process. And it is not possible to trace joint costs to particular products. So in our example, we said the cost of the animal carcass was a joint cost. And we can't trace that cost to particular products. We don't know what portion of the cost relates to leather, meat, or bones. However, we can't just ignore the joint cost because we need to value inventory and we also need to calculate profits. So the joint cost must therefore be allocated to products. And I said to you, we are going to look at four different methods that can be used to allocate joint costs to joint products. So these are the four methods. It's the physical measures method, the sales value at the split-off point method, the net realizable value method, 
and lastly, the constant gross profit percentage method. So please just note for now, those are the four methods. I will go through each of those in detail when we get to our lecture examples. Now it's important to note, guys, we are performing the above calculations to allocate joint costs to joint products. And joint costs are going to be based on production volumes and not sales volumes. So when we are performing all of the above calculations, you should always use production volumes and not sales volumes. Then after the split off point, products can either be sold or they can be processed further. And if they are processed further, any further processing costs can be traced to the specific products. So let's go back to the diagram that we were looking at. Let's say, for example, the company decides they won't sell the leather at the split off point. Instead, they're going to process the leather further and are going to convert the leather into shoes. Obviously, any further processing costs that are incurred, you know that that cost relates to the production of shoes. So we don't need to worry about coming up with different methods to allocate the cost because the further processing cost can be directly traced to the shoes. Okay, so it's only the joint production costs that we need to come up with methods of allocating because we don't know what portion of the cost relates to what product. Then how do we distinguish between joint and bar products? Or in other words, how do we know which products are joint products and which products are bar products? You need to look at the product's relative sales values. Joint products have a high relative sales value and they are crucial to the commercial viability of the organization. So in other words, if the company didn't sell the joint product, it wouldn't exist. On the other hand, bar products are incidental to the production of joint products. So the company isn't trying to manufacture bar products. They just happen in the production process whilst they are busy making the joint products. And bar products have a low relative sales value. So let's go back to our diagram. I want you to assume that the leather can be sold for 20 million rand. The meat can be sold for 25 million rand. And the bones can be sold for 1 million rand. Now, if we just look at the sales value of the bones in isolation, we have a high absolute sales value. But if you go back to the requirements, we shouldn't look at the products in isolation. We need to look at their relative sales value. So in other words, we need to look at the sales value of the bones relative to the other products or compared to the other products. And you can see that the bones have a very low sales value when compared to the other two products. So the bones would be classified as a byproduct and the leather and meat would be classified as joint products. Since the objective of the company is to produce joint products, remember we said byproducts are just incidental to the production of joint products. The reason why the company exists is to produce joint products. So the objective of the company is to produce joint products. And because of that, joint costs should only be allocated to joint products. Joint costs should not be allocated to byproducts. However, if byproducts are processed further, so let's say for example these bones are processed further. Obviously if they are processed further the company will incur further processing costs and those further processing costs directly relate to the bones. They can be traced to the bones. So any further costs that are incurred in processing byproducts after the split off point should be allocated to the byproduct because the costs are incurred for the benefit of the byproduct only. 
So if we have further processing costs, because the byproduct is processed further, those costs are allocated to the byproduct. However, joint costs should not be allocated to byproducts. So how do we deal with byproducts? We take the net income from the sale of the byproduct, and this is deducted from the joint costs before we allocate the joint costs to joint products. So go back to the diagram. The net income from the sale of the byproduct should be deducted from the joint costs before the joint costs are allocated to joint products. So we said we have four different methods that can be used to allocate joint costs to joint products. Before we allocate the joint cost to the joint product, first what we do is we take the joint cost and we offset any income that will be received on the sale of the byproduct. After we've offset the income from the sale of the byproduct, we can then allocate the joint cost to joint products. And please remember, joint costs are not allocated to byproducts.